Motorcycles are fun, but if you don't keep an eye on your wallet, they'll slowly evaporate your savings. If you don't already know, the cost doesn't go away once you buy a motorcycle or make that first payment on your shiny new obsession. Not even a little bit. There's gear, maintenance, insurance, licensing, training courses if you're into that sort of thing. And if you didn't buy something brand new, you're probably looking at a few repairs as well. All this to say, riding is like dating girls. It's as expensive as you want it to be, but it usually ends up being a little bit more than you anticipated. Seriously, it's like $50 for a night out at this point. Quick shout out to Ridge Wallets for supporting the channel. I'll tell you guys more about them at the end of the video. True to my usual shtick, here are the seven hacks to get you in the saddle, cracking mega dank woolies on the cheap and save a few bones. Number one, take care of your toys. You can avoid maintenance with regular maintenance. Wait, what? You can avoid massive, crazy expensive, possibly life-threatening repairs with regular maintenance. Sounds a bit circular, no? That old crazy yam is at it again. He's gonna introduce some highfalutin concept in this video for us. Is he gonna name drop an Ouroboros again? Yes! I am! Not quite. This one's all business, my guys. Wanna know the best part? Most motorcycles are ridiculously easy to work on. Ducati boys, see yourselves out the door. Matter of fact, most Euro bros, please see yourself out the door. My Triumph was as annoying as all get out to work on. As long as you've got a clear diagnosis from Dr. Google, your trusty nurse YouTube can guide you through the process. With shops charging an average of $90 an hour, learning to sit through a few YouTube ads and performing some basic maintenance yourself can put a lot of money back in your pocket. And that money can be used for bike stuff, or all the hot ladies we aren't attracting on our hellhounds, or dudes, whatever you're into. Just make sure if you take something apart, you keep all the pieces together, and if it's an extensive repair, snap some photos along the way so you can see how everything's supposed to fit back together. Something I'm fond of is grabbing some plastic bags and labeling them with a sharpie for where the nuts and bolts came from. For example, if you're breaking down your rear fender, keep a plastic bag that says rear fender. Here's another favorite hack of mine to lower your costs on two wheels. Number two. Now this is a caveat to number one, but know when to leave it to the professionals. An oil change, a handlebar adjustment, a battery replacement, go ahead and YouTube away. If you've got half a brain, a basic toolkit, and you know that left is loose and right is tight, you'll probably be fine. Disclaimer, if you have a quarter of a brain and somehow manage to gank up your repairs, I'm not liable, bro chacho. But if you're riding on a bent fork that's leaking oil and needs a complete kit replacement, you might be better off leaving it to a professional with specialized tools. Or not. Maybe you like living on the edge, or living on a prayer, or living in your mom's basement. People live on a lot of things, right? The point is, you can save money on the small stuff, but it will cost you more in the long run if you try to make a repair that you don't have the tools for, including all the necessary components between the ears. On that note about specialized tools, know that tool ownership is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Over the course of your riding lifetime, which hopefully if you practice safe habits, will be a long, long time, you will slowly accumulate tools as required and necessary for your bike's maintenance schedule. I started off with a simple socket wrench kit and a couple other bits and bobs, and now I own all kinds of one-off and specialized tools. And yet, every other week it feels like I don't own enough tools. Oh well. The important thing to remember here is to save your motorcycle, even if it's from yourself. Moving right along, my next favorite cost-cutting hack for riding bikes. Number three, get used specialized gear. Specialized gear is not the same as the headgear you shamelessly tried to pry off with a butter knife in the high school bathroom on picture day. I know your mom said you look fine, but now all those kids are laughing at the fact that you've been immortalized as a cyborg in the school yearbook. It's mostly weather related, but specialized gear is something you wouldn't necessarily need for everyday riding. Should we make a condom joke here? Is that appropriate? Mm, screw it. Big mistake. Big. Huge. See what I did there? Heated gear, rain suits, knee pads, armor plates, and reflective materials are all non-consumable items. So if someone crashes and sells you a crashed rain suit, that's not a big deal. As long as there's not any rips or tears in that rain suit, it should still do its job, which is to protect you from water, not to save your life in the crash. If you guys haven't seen it yet, Ryan from F9 made a great video on water-resistant gear as related to motorcycles. Definitely check that out. That guy's the hardest working man in motorcycling, I swear. Now this next one might seem a little controversial, but I promise your Papa Yam has your best interests in mind, so hear me out. Number four, buy a cheaper helmet not a used one. There are a ton of great helmets on the market, and you can get a pretty decent brand new one for about a hundred bucks. You can also get a pretty sweet carbon fiber awry for about four grand, so there's a wide swing in that market. But 
are more expensive helmets actually safer? Eh, certainly not above a certain price point. Anything above $200 and you're kind of paying for additional comforts and style features. I covered the differences between a $150 helmet and a $500 helmet. It basically boils down to comfort most of all and bragging rights. However, an Arai saved my life from about 25 feet up in the air, so take that with a grain of salt. And while comfort is certainly nice, it's not completely necessary if you're looking to save some dough. One way you should never try to save dough when it comes to helmet is buying a used one or going without. So I guess that's actually two ways. You're an Helmets are quite good for one crash. Light, medium crash, yammy noob flying through the air crash. They're a one hitter quitter. Once a helmet has seen impact, the safety features are no longer there. So if your great uncle Jesse bought a fat boy, rode it around the neighborhood and decided it wasn't for him, sure, let him cut you a sweet deal on that beautiful retro bell. But for the love of our sweet Lord and Savior Rossi, do not purchase a used helmet on Craigslist that you have no idea about. Not only could you bring home a helmet that's already spent its load, you might bring home some extra creepy crawlies looking for a new home too. While we're on the anti-used kick, you shouldn't buy used boots or gloves either, unless you like the idea of swimming around in someone else's sweat swamp. Gooch juice is a real phenomenon, boys. If you've seen my Craigslist video, you know all about it. And speaking of Craigslist, Here's my favorite item from this list. Number five, check out Craigslist for your next ride. There's definitely some questionable stuff on Craigslist. And while I don't recommend finding your next ride in the missed connection section, you might find some pretty great bikes in the for sale section. A lot of people buy a bike and they realize how expensive it is to actually continue with the hobby and they fight with their partners about it and they realize they don't actually love the amazing sense of freedom and terror that only a motorcycle can give and they basically sell their new toys at a much lower price than they paid. Seriously, you can find lightly used, basically brand new bikes on Craigslist pretty much every day of the week. And if you know a thing or two about mechanics, you can even find some pretty sweet clunkers looking for some tender love and care. Whatever your skill level, if you watch the postings, you're bound to find something you can afford. Pro tip from your favorite noob, prices are higher in the spring and early in fall. Why? Because the weather's amazing and it's bike season. The supply will be lower and the demand will be a bit lower in the middle of summer or winter, so if you're able to shop ahead of time or wait a bit, you can find a lot more bike for the money than if you buy in peak season. The next one on our list, and I'm particularly fond of this one even though my friends think I'm crazy for it, number 6, order your tires online and replace them yourself. You can find tires online for about $70 a piece. Obviously, high-end performance tires will cost a lot more, but if you're looking to ride on the cheap, you're probably not looking at track tires anyways. Most shops charge about $40 to $75 per tire to install them, and some even add an hourly rate on top of that. So you basically get four tires online for the installation fee alone. Tires are regular maintenance, so even if you have to shell out some extra cash for a tool or two, it'll more than pay for itself in the long run. MC Garage put together a great video on how to change your tires yourself, you should definitely check that out. The last thing you want to do is ride on bad tires, they're quintessentially the only thing separating you from the pavement, so unless you've got a thing for road rash, keep your tires maintained. Plugs are only good for a little bit, and not intended to be used for a long time either. And last but not least, we have our final item. Number 7. Get a free motorcycle. Did you strain your eyes from rolling them so hard? Think to yourself, Yami Noob, what the hell are you smoking? Yeah, I get it. It sounds dumb, but it's also legit. The Beginner Bike Series has launched and you can enter to win a free CB919 right here on this channel. If you've been living under a rock wearing your tinfoil hat, here's the rundown. The budget for the Beginner Bike Series project is four grand. Folks who signed up on the Patreon picked the CB919 as the bike I'm going to be giving away. Those same people are also getting to choose the repairs, mods, and anything else that is going to be done within the budget that we're going to do to this bike. We also hang out and chat on the super cool Discord server, so if you want to get to know me a little bit better, you can jump on there. And we should probably name this bike. I don't know, do you name a loved one that you're planning on giving away? I need to think on that. Anywho, check out how you can become a Patreon and cast your vote to mod our CB919 and see all the official rules and enter to win this kick-ass four-cylinder babe for free. And before you say it, yes, I know, what a cop-out from the one and only Shammy dude. Yes, I know, CB919 is not a beginner bike. My patrons have a twisted sense of humor and I can only hope this bike goes to a loving home that's a little experienced. It doesn't get any cheaper than that. Now with all that dosh you saved from utilizing my tips, you can pick up yourself a Ridge Wallet. Ridge is a new sponsor for the channel and they've been phenomenally good to me my guys. They sent over a bunch of wallets for me to try out and I gotta say, this is my favorite wallet that I've owned. It's super minimal, it's 
excellent bulletproof level construction. My guy over at Ridge told me that someone actually shot one of these with a gun and it stopped a bullet, which is kind of cool. And it's all at an affordable price. It's RFID blocking, and in a nutshell, it's the last wallet you're gonna need. I love mine, and I've handed it out to a couple friends and family, and they've loved it too. So head over to ridgewallet.com slash yammy, link is in the description. Use the code yammy at checkout and get yourself 10% off. And that's gonna wrap up today's video, my guys. If you liked the video, be sure to drop the hammer on that like button and subscribe for more. We're posting up two of these lists slash video essay videos per week now. So you're gonna wanna be subscribed for that. I appreciate you watching this video. Seriously, Yami Noob would be nothing without you. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact! In the 1880s, hosiery businessman Lamarcus Thompson hated that Americans were tempted by hedonistic practices in places like Rothels, so he set out to straighten up one of the most immoral places he could think of, Coney Island in New York. There, he built America's first roller coaster to give New Yorkers some good old clean fun, away from seedier pastimes. What a nerd. Goodbye.